Thank you for joining us once again as we Zoom around the county. If you haven't seen our Zoom shows yet and you don't know what Zoom is, well, it's us talking with people around the county from far away because we're not just keeping six feet distance. We're keeping about six miles from now on. So today we're talking to Pat Hodges about local long-term care ombudsman program. That's a long name, but welcome Pat to our show. And maybe you can help us figure out what that long name means. So the ombudsman program, um, the word ombudsman is actually uh, an advocate. Um, so essentially what we do is advocate for residents in long-term care facilities. Um, we accept um, complaints, we accept, you know, calls, um, we take calls from anyone. Anyone can call the program and, and talk to us about any concerns that they may have. Right, right, that's great. And I know it's important to note that you're in your office right now, and I think a lot of people are wondering, you know, what's going on, but you're still hard at work, right? I think I'm working harder. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's, that's good. It's keeping you busy. So yes. and, uh, what what have been the main differences for you uh, working now in your office and maybe not being able to vis uh, visit the facilities? Um, we are currently not allowed to go into a facility unless it is um, basically a case of imminent danger. Um, so we're, we're having to find interesting ways to um, to do our visits. We're still required to visit facilities. And um, so we've talked to a lot of, um, actually, I've talked to all the facilities. A lot of them are doing the video calls. Um, some people have their own cell phones that they're using that I can contact them that way. Um, for the most part, it's it's the video calls. And it, to me, I mean, it, it takes away that privacy issue. Um, but it's something that we, you know, at least we get to lay eyes on people and and talk to them one-on-one. -on -one. Right, and I know you just brought up privacy and, and the issues, but it, everything you do is confidential. So I know we can't get into cases, but did you wanna explain uh, maybe about the confidentiality and what it's like for you to have to investigate a claim? Um, when, we, when we receive a, a call for a complaint, um, our, our main goal is, um, or our main focus is the resident. So before we do anything, we have to have the consent of the resident to do any kind of investigation. We can't even talk to a, a nurse or an administrator or anybody without that consent. And if they don't provide the consent, we can't do anything. We can't investigate on our own. We can't do anything unless right. it's something that affects more than one resident, then we can do it as a as a general concern. Right. So if there are issues or problems or even questions, who, who can contact you? Anyone can contact us. Um, I can take complaints from staff. I can take um, complaints from family members, friends, visitors, caregivers, residents, obviously their representatives. Anyone can call and make a complaint. Okay. And if they do need to call and get in contact with you, how do they do that? Um, they can reach me at my office, and that number is 410-758-0848, and my extension is 2714. They can also email me at phodges at qac.org. Um, even though we're teleworking three days a week, I'm checking emails and voicemails throughout the day, um, so I should be able to respond within 24 to 48 hours. Sure. And how about, I know you're local, we're in Queens County, but someone might be watching from out. If How about like uh, Maryland Department? Is there a way to contact them? Yes, the Maryland Department of Aging um, Ombudsman, the State Ombudsman Office is 410-767-2161. Great. And now that I have you here, you know, we, we're talking about people that might be trapped in their homes right now. Are there any ideas for friends or families about uh, ways to stay connected during this time? Um, we've, we're still battling with that on different ideas. Um, sure. People have to become creative. I do know that you know people are visiting through the through the windows at the facilities. Um, they can also, if they if they have social media, um, they can take pictures. 
They can um, post it on Facebook. And if they tag um, the con consumer voice um, at consumer voice or at the com consumer voice or use Twitter uh, at, at consumer voices, um, they can also email information to the consumer voice.org and they'll post it on their website. So people can see pictures. I know a lot of people are just holding up signs that say, you know, I'm doing okay. I miss you. I love you. You know, whatever. Right. But it's, it's really difficult on these people, everybody really, I mean, families that want to see their loved ones and, and the residents who are, who are kind of room bound at this point, you know, right. they're, they're not able to do communal things, which makes it really, really lonely. Yeah. And I'm sure there are a lot of like grandkids right now who are learning the archaic way of writing a letter and mailing it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm okay. I'm okay with that. And But also, you know, that, that's tips for ways to stay communicated, but are there any tips for maybe the people that are in isolation or people that are self quarantining or anything like that? Well, you know, there's always the television, thankfully. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a, that's what we push the most. Watch us. You watch television. Right. Of course you do. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, you can always read read a book or or if you're not, you know, your eyes aren't so good, whatever, you can, they have audio books out there that are awesome to listen to. Um, you know, there's magazines, there's artwork that you can do. You can ask them to supply you with some you know, art supplies so that you can do arts and crafts in your room. Um, you know, you, the, the other thing is um, just kind of being creative in, in how you do things. Some residents are calling residents rooms and talking on the phone to a different resident in a different room. Right. It's got to be such a, a change for them, but hopefully these nice, fun, creative ways are, are ways to keep the time going and Keep the mind busy because I know a lot of people are thinking negatively. Hopefully they can stay positive. Right. And, and you know, there's people that have some, some depression issues. This is mm -hmm. absolutely creating a higher level of anxiety for them. So I'd ask, you know, that the staff um, be a little more considerate of that. And, and I also want to say how much I appreciate what the staff are doing and the facilities are doing. They are doing their very best to keep these people safe and healthy. And, you know, I know it's it, it's easy to be offended, but it's very important to know how hard they're all working to make sure right. that people stay safe. Right. Well, we can't appreciate those people enough for the hard work they're putting in. And, and also uh, for you, because you're still staying in contact and doing lots of great things for them and you're still their, their voice in their ears. So we appreciate everything that you're doing. I want to thank you for joining us today. See, this wasn't bad. A Zoom interview. It was fun. <laughs> it was fun. I appreciate yeah. it. And if anything ever changes, you can come back and let us know. Okay. Thank you again. Yeah, of course. So we want to thank Pat for stopping by through Zoom and technology. We had a good time talking with her. If you need any more information, you always go to their websites, go to Facebook and, and keep going to the, the Consumer Voice and see what they're doing. Lots of great programs and lots of great people that are doing hard work. And we'll Zoom with you soon.